Good morning, everybody. Uh, praise God. Um, it's a beautiful day. We have a beautiful blue sky out there, and it's starting to warm up. It just uh, makes you think, you know, you live in one of the most beautiful places on earth, right? Paulden, you've got to get used to it, though, right? Uh, but we do. We, we have a beautiful community. We have beautiful uh, scenery. Uh, you know, um, tonight, this is one of the few places I know I've ever seen on earth to where you can actually look almost down from my place. You can look down and see the moon rise. Uh, it, like, comes up bright. And tonight, you might want to go out and take a peek because it's going to be a super moon, right? So uh, that, that should be really nice. Yeah, uh, we do have a wonderful community. We, uh, we live in... Um, we have got beautiful nature all around us. Uh, the only problem we do put up with a few little things that come along with living in the country, right? Uh, Tom just told me that we have the finest dust on earth. <laughs> now, how many other communities can say that? So, uh, praise God. We, uh, we're, we're fortunate to be here, fortunate to be alive. But most of all, we're fortunate to have a God in heaven who loves us unconditionally and uh, he looks down on us and uh, we say the the, the, uh, the joy of the Lord is my strength uh, but God is saying the joy of the Lord is my strength so uh, he, he looks at us and he says these are my children these are the, these are the ones I I created the world for I paid I paid the price to redeem them uh, so he loves you and uh, we are learning every day to love the Lord more and more. So praise God for that. Sister Jane, will you open us in a prayer today? Today is the day, and, you know, uh, the scripture says, this is the day the Lord has made, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today is the day to uh, take an, uh, an appraisal of your spirit. Um, your time with God, your, your opportunities to be uh, close to him, your opportunities to pray, to hear from the Lord, all happen right now, in the now. So today, you, you have the opportunity to push all of the, the negative, all of the bad, everything that ever um, oppressed you or hurt you or uh, caused you um, anguish. You can just push it away from your spirit, and you can uh, look at yourself in God's eyes. And uh, that's what I want to do today is, is kind of take us uh, and give us a perspective on how God looks down on us and what he sees. Uh, you know, life is not easy. We know that we all have uh, trials and tribulations. Uh, but, you know, you would not be the person that you are right now had it been, not been for the sum total of your experiences. You know, I've heard some stories. Some people have had a pretty hard lives. But I also see in those very same people um, that the courage and the determination and the endurance that they developed uh, over their life experiences. So... Uh, I, I found this quote, and I thought it was pretty good. Uh, God gave you this life because he knew you were strong enough to live it. So does, God doesn't appreciate us being whiners, does he? <laughs> it doesn't do us any good. Uh, he wants us to be strong and to live our lives to the fullest. And when you take it and you get a bit uh, uh, see the big picture um, God made us strong he made us determined uh, he gave us this life uh, and it was custom made uh, he, he, he knew you before you were even uh, he says it uh, he knitted you together in the, in the womb he made you so um, 
This is encouraging because that means he's going to give you this, all the strength you need for tomorrow. You've made it this far. Why turn back now? He's the source of our strength. And uh, he's the source of our joy. Praise God. I'm going to get into that uh, as we go along a little bit more. Uh, and if you ever really get overwhelmed, just remember, life is short, but heaven is forever. Paul's put it this way. He says, um, I cannot compare the, my, the trivial sufferings I've endured. Okay. I can't compare those to the glory that I'm about to uh, come into uh, with God. Um, he's, he called the pains and sufferings he had endured trivial. You realize he was stoned to death and came was brought back to life? Uh, he was locked in prisons with l lack of food and water and deprived of just basic necessities. Um, he, was, he was lost at sea more than once. Uh, he said he floated around in the deep for three days. Uh, he was uh, beaten, uh, abused. He was rejected by his people. Um, and he said, I, those sufferings are nothing compared to what I have in store for me. Just the joy of what I see coming from the Lord is far more powerful in my spirit than anything that could be done to me physically. So praise God. You know, um, we look at life, and, and sometimes, um, like, uh, Linda will come up to me and say, we've got to start doing stuff. I, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm old, and I, I, wanted, I haven't felt like I've done anything in, in life yet. I haven't even got started. Um, God didn't plan for us to be here any more time than it took for us to um, come to the knowledge of saving the knowledge of Jesus Christ uh, and to... Uh, share those things with our friends and family and once uh, we've accomplished that our purpose on earth is basically anything left over is just uh, you go out with your ministry and you uh, share the word of God um, that might be a, a good thing to think about if you're like getting to be middle aged and you haven't started a ministry yet um, maybe, uh, maybe God's going to say well I, I see that they're not going to do anything more with this life, and they're saved, so I'll just take them on home, right? <laughs> so while you're here, go out and do the works of God. And do the, uh, spread the word of God. Lead people to the Lord. Um, well, <laughs> that could happen too, right? <laughs> that could happen too. Well, I wanted to talk about some of the events we've got going, and I also wanted to have everybody take another look at our prayer list. Um, Ed, how are you doing? You're on the prayer list now. You feeling okay? Okay, well, we're praying. Praying for good test results and uh, that uh, the Lord has healing here and touches you. Uh, now, um, I want us to remember Sister Val. You're going in for some kind of, uh, are you going in for surgery, Val? Yeah, I'll take it after surgery. And when is this coming up? In December. In December? Okay. Keep, remember to keep Val in your prayers for this. Um, Darlene, how are you doing? <laughs> That's all that really counts, right? Well, they got to make some money at this, too, you know, darling. Okay, we keep Ralph in our prayers. He was at the food bank last uh, Thursday. Uh, he's healing a little on the slow side, I guess. Um, so keep, uh, keep Ralph in your prayers. Sister Jen, how are you feeling? Good? Maybe I, maybe I need to shorten the list. I'm getting some good reports. <laughs> Tom, how you doing? Keep, keep Tom in your prayers. You know what I think would heal you, Tom? Well, of course the Lord is our great physician, but if you would just stop working on cars, you'd feel so much better. I could be a lot less anxious. And of course, we keep praying for Anna. She's doing good. Uh, her uh, 
test results are coming back better than we expected. So, uh, but keep these people in your prayers. Let's, uh, now I know that there's probably other people that have prayer needs, maybe silent prayers. Uh, bring them to the Lord. Uh, there's um, uh, all the, uh, the uh, riches of heaven are at your disposal. Um, come to the Lord with prayer and supplication. Uh, fervent prayer availeth much, right? Does anybody know what supplication means? Basically, it means to beg the Lord, okay? So come to the Lord and let your petitions be known. Uh, so if you have a prayer need, or if there's something special we need to pray about, let me know right now. We'll, I know that we wanted to pray for Gillian, right, Darlene? Her grandson, Gillian. Who? Okay. Tyler and Gillian. If you have a special prayer need, let it be known. Let's bow our heads and just lift, lift our, our needs to the Lord. Dear Father in heaven, we are a needy people, and you created us that way, Lord. Um, it's part of your plan that we should, we should come before you, Lord, with prayer and supplication. So, Lord, all the needs of this church, Lord, the people that need healing, you are our source of healing. You are almighty, God. And Father, we have special needs for Darlene's two grandsons, Gillian and Travert, Lord. You would um, give them a healing, Lord. They need it so much. Um, if there's a surgery that's going to take place, Lord, we know that you, you can use doctors um, to help us. So we just pray that you would be there and, and help um, guide the doctor's hands. And Father, I know that there's probably silent prayers of special needs that people have. And I ask that you'd look down and look into our hearts, Lord that you would uh, bless each and every person here. And those who are sick and can't be with us today, Lord, we lift them up with our prayers also. For we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Um, okay. This, I'm going to give you guys a little parable. This squirrel represents the food bank, okay? And this corn represents potato chips. We have a trailer full of potato chips. <laughs> and it's just too much of a good thing. So let's pray for the food bank to get a better variety of some healthy foods as we go along. So, uh, Tom, will you, uh, will you lift the food bank up in prayer for us? your blessings you know we uh, we're always grateful for everything uh, that the Lord provided we we see this ministry as the Lord working through us to help the needs of, uh, of our community so uh, it's not like we don't we're not grateful for the potato chips but there's just not that much you can do with them after you have five bags of potato chips people just don't need anymore right so praise God God rewards those who diligently seek him. This is going to come up in Hebrews 11. We're in Hebrews right now. Um, being a seeker of God. Anybody have any ideas, ways that we seek God? Just some thoughts, ideas? I'm throwing it out there. What's a, what's a good way to seek God? Prayer? What was that, Tom? Reading the, reading the word, the Bible. Ed? Go out and, yeah. Um, do a ministry. Um, any other thoughts? Praise. Praise. Um, 
worship. Sharing the word. Sharing the word. Um, the, probably the core of seeking is, uh, is in your prayers, right? Fasting. That's a way to really... Fasting is like a form of super prayer, isn't it? It's where you set your body aside, not just your spirit. You set your body aside and focus on the Lord. Um, diligently. Uh, diligently, that means with fervor, with intention. But it also means as a practice. Ongoing, every day, it's part of your life. Uh, and uh, what kind of rewards will we expect if we diligently seek the Lord? To answer the prayers that our greatest need, right? Um, to or answer the prayer of, of the greatest need for someone we love or care for. So, um, when we come together as a church, um, our purpose is to diligently seek after the Lord. We pray, and then we look for His answer. Um, and uh, there's no, um, what do they call it, um, there's no such thing as a part-time Christian, right? It's like when you become a airborne, right, Gary? There's no part-time airborne, is there? No part-time mariners, are there, Ed? You're in, you're jo you're in the service, and you made a commitment, right? Uh, we'll get into that in Hebrews. They own you, right? <laughs> so you are you are committed. There's no, um, there's no uh, um, undercover Christians. There's no uh, uh, hidden Christians. You've got to be out there in the, in the world. I wanted to explore how the Lord looks at us a little bit. Um, John 15, 1 through 4, Jesus said, and he says, I am the vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He makes it more fruitful. He gets rid of, you know, maybe this part doesn't really belong there anymore. This, this is a weak branch, or this is a, this is a branch that has a disease. Um, he prunes those branches away and protects and grows that vine, doesn't he? That it may, be, may bear more fruit. And then he's talking to us and he says, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. I am the true vine, Jesus says. And I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remain, remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Jesus sees you as part of himself, doesn't he? That's pretty amazing when we stop and think about it. That from his perspective, you are part of his body. You are part of him. He's the vine that connects us all together. Uh, but you are the branches. He says, you're part of me. Because he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. You're useless. You're you're the, the dead branches that were pruned off, and or you were a vine that never never grew. Um, um, he says of all, uh, uh, everything apart from him that's not in the vine, that that's all going to be gathered up and, and burnt. There is nothing, uh, there is no um, other path that we have or the world has than Jesus Christ. So 
the Lord sees you as part of himself. And we should see ourselves as part of Jesus. That's pretty amazing when you stop and think about it, isn't it? But it's right there in the Word. Did you ever consider that you are a part of, of Jesus? It says that we're a body, doesn't it? And the head of the body is Jesus Christ. And we are the hands and the fingers and the, the legs and the eyes and the ears. And, um, and uh, we are part of the body of Christ, aren't we? He sees us as part of his body. He's the vine, we're the branches. He is the head, we are the hands and feet. Part of the body. We're all part of his spirit, aren't we? Aren't we all part of the Holy Spirit? Isn't the Holy Spirit in us and with us and around us? That's that's makes us part of the mind of Christ, doesn't it? The, th the thinking of the Lord. Not are we only just part of the body, like for the effort of physical things to do. We're part of the mind of Christ, too. The spirit. Wow. What, a, what an honor. We're not just saved um, like a collection of of um, little sheep that um, that are you know gathered into his stable and put in his barn, we're saved and become part of him. We could do nothing apart from him. Do we lose ourselves in Christ? Do we lose our identity? No, we preserve our identity. We are, um, we are always going to be that creation that God specifically made us to be. We uh, will always um, be uh, have a relationship with God. We'll always have a relationship with the Spirit, with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, um, our place in, in heaven um, is kind of a mystery to us now, but um, I noticed that as I read the book of Revelations, that I find that it really gets defined down to two, uh, two things. There's the father, and then there's the children. Um, the Holy Spirit, um, it um, after um, the rapture and the um, uh, going into the millennial kingdom, we um, start to see that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit began to merge into one. It all becomes uh, like one. Uh, I think that's why um, uh, a part of the problem why the Jews could not accept Jesus is because um, he said he was the son of God. And um, they came back with the Lord of behold, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Um, they could not um, accept the fact that, that God was coming in, was appearing and being revealed in three persons, the Father, the, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So they killed Jesus for that reason, because he said, they asked him point blank. They said, in the name of the Father, are you the Messiah, the Son of God? Do you realize at that moment he could have said, no, and saved his life and saved himself from all the pain and suffering. But he would have lied. 
So rather than just saying yes, he said, you're going to see me sitting at the right hand of God because he was the Messiah. They couldn't accept, accept that. But as we see in, the, in the, uh, uh, the time as we go on into the, the millennium and even into eternity, um, the Father, Son, and the Spirit um, seem to grow into one, but then there we are. We are, uh, it says that he will be our God and we shall be his children. Interesting, I think. Kind of a rabbit trail there. But how does, how does Jesus relate to us? Okay, we're, he's the vine, we're the branches, we're part of him. He is, we're in the body of the Christ. We are parts of the body of Christ. Um, he, um, he hears our prayers. He listens to us. He wants to have a relationship with us. It says we must abide in the vine. It's really pretty simple. Trust the Lord in everything. Go to the Lord. Um, he is, um, you depend on him completely. When you are making your decisions, when you are conversing with other people um, the Lord is part of that transaction let's say and obey um, he said if you love me you will obey my command right um, and then he and then he goes on to say and this is my commandment that you love one another uh, as I have loved you Love the Lord with all your heart, all your body, all your soul, all your mind, all your spirit, and love one another as you love yourself. It's easy. It's beautiful. It's the best possible result that there could be that he called us to love. So we trust and obey the Lord. We seek him. We read the Bible. We pray. So abiding in the vine is natural. If you, um, if you love the Lord and you love your brothers and sisters, if you love everyone, um, abiding in the vine is a very natural place to be. It's really what you would, uh, if we weren't living in this downfallen world full of sin and grief, um, we would, um, it, would uh, it would seem so right and natural, the world would be able to grow into the vine and become saved so easy. Um, okay, pruning. This is the part that always makes people a little bit nervous, right? Pruning has a, a very, uh, if you go to a doctor, let's say, and he says, well, we're going to have to do a little pruning. You'd get a little up, uptight, wouldn't you? <coughs> pruning is removing the bad and preserving the good. Removing the diseased and keeping the healthy. Uh, removing the dead weight and keeping the fruitful part and the bountiful part. All right, pruning. And here's where you get pruned. Um, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. The Lord expects us, to, uh, expects, expects us to know what a good doctrine is, right? He expects us to study this word. Um, reproof. This is when you're wrong about something. The Lord shows you you're wrong about something, and he wants you to accept that fact and do something about it. Correction. If you, um, if you offend your brother or sister, or you um, have a, a 
disagreement. Um, the Word of God teaches us that we are supposed to, once we become aware of what's happening, we are supposed to go and take responsibility to um, heal that relationship. We are supposed to correct it. We are supposed to correct the things that we've done to a degree in the past. We're forgiven of that, but uh, we need to correct the effects that sin has had on our lives. Um, to correct is to examine the situation, line it up with the word, and make the changes that, that you know need to be done to get back on the right path. That's pruning. And for instruction in righteousness, we're always going to be growing in the Lord, aren't we? None of us are perfect, and, and none of us have come to the point where we can say, oh, okay, God, I'm ready for, ready for the next book. This is it. But righteousness means the right standing with you in God's eyes. So these are the pruning processes. If you're not being pruned, what's going on? If some of this isn't happening in your life, that's kind of a kind of a sign that maybe maybe there's an imbalance, right? If you're not changing every day to be a little more like Jesus, um, you're you're going the other way. And so you can come be uh, that the man of God, woman of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Ultimately, we were created to do good works. Um, and good works uh, are from the very smallest to the very biggest. From the very smallest thing, maybe it's just a kind word of comfort. Maybe it's just helping out somebody with financial need that they have. Uh, Maybe it's just uh, going the extra mile, uh, you know, and um, uh, helping someone with a problem they're having. Uh, good works. There's an endless amount of good works that need to be done. And uh, God is preparing you as a Christian to do that. But I want to get back to the thing. Is how, how does Jesus see us? John 15 14 and 15. This is the same chapter. You are my friends if you do what I command you. What did he command us? To love. I know long, no longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends. For all things that I heard from my father I have made it known to you. Not only are we part of his body, not only are we uh, part of the vine that's growing and bearing fruit, you are a friend of Jesus. He's the head and we're the body. But he doesn't consider himself so far above us that, that he doesn't think of us as his friends. To me, only God could could create such beautiful situations. Such a beautiful story. The Bible is the most beautiful story that that there ever was, that there ever could be. They say the Bible's inspired by God, written by men, but guided, the pen was guided by the Holy Spirit. Uh, what could be more beautiful than God's plan of salvation? Uh, that, that he's going to come um, at some time in the future, when it's just the perfect time, when everybody that is going to be saved is just at the right place, and he's going to separate us unto himself. And then the fun begins. Donna and I were talking about um, the past.
passage we read in Hebrews last week about how that uh, Paul, who I believe wrote Hebrews, um, said worlds, that he created the worlds. When we come into the fullness of the, being the children of God and we enter into the kingdom, we are going to have the most amazing adventure. There is going to be completeness in, in, uh, in our spirit of joy happiness, and peace, and uh, for the first time, we'll be able to look at our lives and ourselves and, the, and the, the creation for what it really is. For the first time, uh, we'll have um, an idea of what this was all about. Why are we here? Why did God create all this? And... Uh, when he says worlds, I think that we're going to go and explore the universe. That's one of the things I think we'll do. I think that we'll have our own homes and our, that says we'll have our own fig tree and we'll have our own mansion. But I think that uh, God has big plans. Once he gets all this sorted out and he gets us all um, freed from the bondage of sin and death, man, he's got big plans for you and I. And... Uh, isn't it nice to know that he's your friend? Oh, praise God. He's told, Jesus said he's told us everything the Father told him to tell us, to let us know about. He's made it known to us. There's no mystery that, um, that, we, are, that we are coming short of what God expected us to be. That we are, somehow we're a half Christian or we're not quite there or we're so imperfect that you know we've got to kind of hide a little bit um, so God doesn't get a real good look at us and you know what we're really like he knows us and uh, he loves us and um, I think that that is when you consider the fact that by his very word God created the universe he created life. He breathed the breath of life into, into the mud and created Adam. When you think about his awesomeness and his power, his glory, that he is going to let us share in that is, you can only say God is love. It's, um, it's, it cannot get any better than that. So praise God. Um, you know, there's a song. I was going to see if we had it somewhere, but I didn't get a chance to look it up. But maybe we can play it next week. What a friend we have in Jesus. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrows share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our flaws. And you know what? Um, he knows who we are. And he still he loves us anyway. He still calls us friend. So, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths in Proverbs. The closer you you turn your your spiritual self, your your daily um, you know, your daily process of the things that you want, your desires, um, the more you conform those to God's purpose, the happier, the stronger, the healthier, um, the wiser you're going to be. And it happens right now because today is the day. You, don't, you couldn't change it from yesterday, could you? You don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So today is the day that you um, walk closer to the Lord, that you acknowledge him in everything that you do, that you uh, live the fullest you can as a, as a Christian. Praise God. Proverbs, a lot of wisdom there. Let's pray. 
Oh, Father in heaven, what a privilege it is to be called your children. Father, what a privilege it is to be, to be shown in your word, led and guided by your Holy Spirit, Lord, um, to be a friend, um, considered a friend. And Father, it is so humbling to think of all the ramifications. But we thank you, O oh God, in your wisdom and your power that you look down on us with love. We thank you for all the wonders, Lord, all the gifts you've given us, and for this beautiful day, Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Let's praise the Lord. I wanted to, uh, I wanted to show you something that, uh, that Audrey came up with, and I thought this was so good, and I hope you can see it. It says, do everything through Jesus, because Jesus does everything through love. Very good, Audrey. Anybody wants a copy of this, let me know, and I'll get you a copy.